You're going to love this course. The reason why you're going to love it is because we deliver it in a way that's nice and straightforward. We're not here to try and convince you of things or deliver it in a way that makes us look clever. We're here just to transfer the knowledge and I think you'll come away understanding it a lot better than you can. We get a, a huge range of people that come on the courses from people who have been in this industry for many years to uh, new graduates straight out of university. Uh, and they all come with, with different ideas uh, and part of the day uh, is discussing amongst the group uh, of people's different experiences and also what we're teaching at the time. We have a very open question and answer session. We've had a number of uh, people who've come in from uh, companies where they use steam uh, in a lot of applications in the food industry and in the, in the beverage industry uh, and over the years their, their practices have got uh, uh, stayed and maybe lazy uh, and they, they've got issues of, of all sorts with steam and we're just trying to, uh, to show them where they can make things more efficient, uh, safer. So uh, this is my favourite part of the course. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the steam site guide. Um, up to now we've, I would say, been looking at some of the basics but with this we'd like to take it up a notch. What we're going to do here is take you through some of the standard steps involved in heat exchange systems. Of course, firstly, we have to look at how much steam you're consuming, so we'll be doing a calculation based on that. And once you have the steam consumption rate, you can look at things like sizing your steam pipework, uh, sizing the condensate pipework, looking at the steam traps, and of course the bugbear for every steam engineer, looking at flash steam. Well, we hope that uh, when people come on our course, they'll go away uh, more aware of steam, how to use steam, uh, the do's and don'ts with steam, some of the problems that you can have in a steam plant, how to overcome them and how to make your manufacturing process more efficient. We're now going to move on to how to size a steam pipe. For applications where we look at pipe work in less than 50 metres of length, we can use what we call the velocity sizing method. This is where we try to size the pipe work using a steam velocity of around 25 meters per second. In practice, steam velocities can actually be between 15 and 40 meters per second, but the happy medium between both of these being the 25. We're now going to look at a typical example based around an industrial autoclave condensing 180 kilograms per hour of steam at three bar. From the table, we read down the left hand side column for the steam pressure until we get to the three bar. Then we read down the next column, we're going to be using a steam velocity of 25 meters per second. We then read across this row until we reach a value greater than the 180 kilos per hour that we're sizing for. For this example, the first value we come to on the table is 188. So we then read up to the top row on the table where our steam pipe work size is. And for this particular example, we would size the steam pipe work to 32 millimeters. We make control valves for steam. We make other products that can be used on steam. Uh, and we'd like to promote our products where it's appropriate. Uh, we feel we've got some products that have got great advantages over our competitors. But we talk a lot of things about a lot of things where we don't manufacture a suitable product. We don't make steam traps. Uh, so, but we still talk about them. So it's not just about uh, Berkett. We're trying to promote ourselves as a source of knowledge and experience in the industry, not just as a manufacturer of products. Engineers are now, these days, expected to be experts in um, electrical, in PLCs, in well, steam, compressed air. It doesn't matter. The, the, the topics seem to be endless. Here we just try and take them for a day out of their daily work and say, hey, look, you may have overlooked this subject, we don't want you to, we want you to take a second look at it, it's important. If you mishandle steam, not only can it be inefficient, it can also be uh, dangerous. We want to send you away after the, after the day with a better appreciation of, of how you can improve things in terms of efficient use of steam, but also have an eye, a very good eye, on the safety of steam. So, from the steam tables, we can see that one droplet of water, when converted to steam, increases in volume by 1,673 times. From the same steam tables we can see that when steam condenses it also reduces in volume by 1,673 times and that reduction in volume can cause the creation of a vacuum. 
So when a steam process such as a heat exchanger or a jacketed pan cools down, the conditions apply for a formation of a vacuum and this vacuum can cause the equipment to be damaged by implosion. And we can actually demonstrate this quite simply. So here we have a simple empty beer can and I'm just going to place a few drops of water into it and then place this over this burner and convert the water into steam. And then when it's all converted into steam, we'll see what happens when I plunge it into the water. Does anyone know what happened? Now this is just a very simple experiment with a can of beer. But in reality when it happens, it can be catastrophic and very expensive. The real purpose of the course is to give people a really good overview and understanding of the, of the theories behind what we're trying to sell. So we're, we're not trying to push products, we're just trying to uh, show people the applications uh, and give them a better understanding of the theoretical knowledge so that they can go back to their companies uh, and use that in the future. For us, it, it's always been like this. It is not a demonstration on how clever we are. We really want to break it down into something quite straightforward and simple. Knowledge transfer is what Burkitt's all about. So if we can deliver this in a way that makes sense and build up quite slowly, for us, the target is reached. <laughs>